In an alternate 1982, a huge alien spaceship arrives on Earth and hovers above South Africa. For three months, the ship showed no activity, so the authorities finally decided to cut their way inside. They discover a group of malnourished aliens as they ran out of supplies a long time ago. Humans derogatorily named these aliens prawns. Rumors circulate about a shuttle descending from the mothership, but nobody can find it. After receiving international pressure, the South African government moved 1.8 million prawns to a refugee camp named District 9. Scholars believe that these prawns, being workers of their species, need higher leaders to command them and rarely take the initiative. All soldiers and fences surround it, the first few months in the district remain peaceful. Humans learn that aliens love cat food. However, as time passes, humans begin rioting because the government uses too many resources on aliens instead of their people. District 9 turns into a slum, increasing people's xenophobia. The aliens, viewing certain violent activities like setting fire to vehicles as mere entertainment, do not help their case. The area eventually becomes overcrowded and a prime land for crime. Warlord Old Sanjo opens a massive black market in District 9, including lady workers and arms trafficking. The alien's technology, advanced as it is, eludes human hands in operating their weapons. 28 years later, the tension between aliens and locals compels the government to relent to public pressure. They decide to move the camp away from the city to a remote location. They hired a weapons manufacturer called MNU Multinational United for this task. Mr. Smith, an executive of MNU, appoints his employee and son-in-law Wakis to lead the relocation. A group of mercenaries accompanying Wakis for his safety and to push along any resisting aliens also come along. Wakis' assistant and a cameraman join to record everything. While preparing, Wakis feels unhappy seeing the vast amount of weapons the mercenaries bring. Still, Colonel Venter insults him and tells him to deal with it. A convoy of vehicles carries the team to the district, crossing through protests. When a few prawns attack them, the mercenaries defend themselves with killing shots. Wakis goes from door to door, asking the prawns to sign in eviction forms, sometimes using cat food as a bargain. While some aliens willingly cooperate, others resist being taken from their homes and fight back, leading the mercenaries to remove them forcefully despite Wakis' protests. In one of the houses, Wakis and his team find a room-filled wall to wall with prawn eggs. After showing them to the camera, Wykus orders a mercenary to burn them. The shacks also conceal a lot of hidden alien technology, which the mercenaries confiscate for the NU's ongoing tests, even though they have yet to understand it. Meanwhile, Christopher, his son CJ, and his friend Paul search for a special alien fluid in the piles of destroyed prawn technology amidst the trash. After two decades, CJ finally discovers a piece, and the group excitedly brings it to their home. There, they synthesize the fluid in a hidden room filled with advanced technology and place it inside a silver cylinder to further their plan. However, just then, Wykus and his team knock on their door. Christopher and CJ hurriedly retreat to their house, and after hiding the cylinder, Paul steps out to confront the humans. Refusing to cooperate, Paul quickly finds himself pushed to the ground and held at gunpoint by the mercenaries. When Wykus enters the house to investigate, he discovers numerous weapons and the cylinder, which he accidentally activates, spraying his face. After seizing the cylinder, Wykus attempts to question Paul. Still, Paul responds by hurling a mercenary into his house and pushing Wykus onto a barrel of fire. Venter, arriving with more men, immediately executes Paul, while Wykus realizes he has burned his arm. Receiving medical attention, Wykus continues his duty, eventually reaching Christopher's house. He tries to offer candy to CJ, who responds by throwing it at him. Injured by this reaction, the humans force Christopher to his knees and inspect the house, uncovering various equipment. While looking around, Weka suddenly throws up a lot of weird liquid and begins feeling dizzy. The team decides to take him away for now, but when they stop to grab a bite, Weka's nose begins bleeding. More symptoms keep appearing when Weka returns to the office to do his reports. He won't stop coughing and his nails are coming out of his fingers. Back in the district, Christopher and CJ desperately search for the missing cylinder, feeling heartbroken when they can't find it. 
At the same time, a group of prawns exchanges their battle suit for cat food at Warlord Ob Sanjo's base, where a prawn is killed for food. Ob Sanjo, eager to use alien weaponry, employs witches and shamans to transform him into a prawn. Still, his attempts have been unsuccessful so far. Meanwhile, Wekus is surprised by a party at home organized by his wife, Tanya, to celebrate his promotion. Trying to be sociable, Wekus feels increasingly unwell, eventually vomiting in the bathroom, and then again during the cake cutting, leading to him fainting. The following morning, Wekus finds himself in a hospital. A doctor unwraps the bandages from his injured arm, revealing that his hand has transformed into that opron. Shocked, the doctor alerts the MNU, and soldiers rush in to whisk away Wakus, ignoring Tania's frantic requests for an explanation. Later at a lab, the staff finds the cylinder in Wakus' pocket, and they take it away. From then on, the MNU puts Wakus through a series of brutal experiments, including trying out alien technology. To Wakus' surprise, his new hand has enough prawn DNA to use the alien weapons. Wakus suffers as they make him shoot various targets, and in the end, he also has to shoot a prawn to death, which mentally destroys him. Once the tests are over, the scientists and the executives, including Smith himself, agree to kill Wakus to harvest his organs and blood before he finishes transforming into a prawn. With the DNA composed of the perfect prawn and human balance, they create great soldiers capable of using alien weapons. When he hears this, Wykus freaks out and attacks everyone around him, using a scalpel to get a hostage so he can escape the lab before he's shot. The mercenaries are ordered to go after him, and Smith meets with Tanya to give her a twisted version of what's going on. On the streets, Wykus steals clothes from hangers and a phone from a kid and scavenges trash cans for food, always trying to keep his claw hidden. In a state of desperation, Wykus tries to contact his friends and family, seeking help only to find that they all seem to be ignoring him. The reason for their avoidance becomes clear when he enters a shop and sees a news report on TV. The broadcast declares him a wanted fugitive, claiming he has contracted a contagious disease from the prawns. This shocking news causes a wave of panic in the store, leading everyone to evacuate, avoiding him hastily. Left with no other choice, Wykus realizes he must go back to District 9, the only place where he might find refuge. In a distressing turn of events, Tania calls him only to express her disgust. She abruptly cuts off the communication, refusing to listen to his side of the story. Driven by a desperate desire to win back her affection, Wykus picks up an axe with the intent to remove his prawn claw. However, overwhelmed by nervousness and pain, he only manages to sever one finger. This action is abruptly interrupted by the sound of mercenary helicopters scurrying the area for him. In a frantic search for shelter, he runs into a house, where he inadvertently meets Christopher and stumbles into his secret room, collapsing from the loss of blood from his injury. Upon regaining consciousness, he finds himself inside the rumored shuttle hidden beneath Christopher's house. Explaining to Christopher and CJ that he no longer possesses the cylinder, they inform him that the fluid in the cylinder is crucial for operating the mothership and could also power a machine to reverse his transformation. Wykus realizes retrieving the cylinder is a futile endeavor as the mercenaries would kill him instantly. His body undergoes excruciating pain, transforming as his skin sheds and his torso mutates. Another call from Tania promises reconciliation, but unbeknownst to him, the MNU has orchestrated this as a ruse to track his location. CJ expresses his longing for their home planet to Christopher, who counters with a reminder of their immobility without the fluid, suggesting relocation to the new settlement. Overhearing this, Wakus advises against it, citing the inferior conditions of the new territory. Driven by a desire to aid the prawns and return to his wife, Wakus devises a plan. He then confronts Ob Sanjo to acquire weapons, facing disdain and violence. Ob Sanjo, noticing Wakus's transformation, orders his men to seize Wakus's claw. In a desperate struggle, Wykus locates an alien weapon, unleashing its formidable power to decimate his assailants, escape, and secure a bag of weapons. Meanwhile, mercenaries arriving at Christopher's find it deserted. Christopher and Wykus, having blasted their way into the MU base, 
engaged and eliminated several guards, securing the cylinder. The sight of numerous prawns subjected to fatal experiments, including Paul, paralyzes Christopher with shock. This delay allows the mercenaries to catch up and initiate a shootout. Wakus retaliates fiercely, his reminders of CJ's future helping Christopher to recover from his shock. Utilizing lab scraps, Christopher constructs a bomb, creating an escape route. They then hijack an MAU car, pursued by Venter and his team, to return to District 9. At the house, CJ fills the shuttle with the fluid. Christopher confesses his three-year return plan to cure Wakus, as the current fluid quantity is insufficient for both the shuttle and the healing machine. An enraged Wakus incapacitates Christopher, descends into the shuttle where CJ is working, and activates it. As Wakus struggles with the shuttle's controls, Vender threatens Christopher's life outside. The shuttle's ascent disrupts the ground, forcing Vender and Christopher to flee just before a missile cripples one of its engines, leading to its crash. Afterward, Venter's men capture Christopher and Wakus and take them away in their car. However, the vehicle is suddenly ambushed by Osanjo's gang, causing their cars to crash against Venter's. Then the gang opens fire and fiercely fights against the mercenaries until they grab Wakus, taking him away while leaving Christopher behind. CJ, meanwhile, reactivates the mothership. At the gang's base, the witches attempt a ritual on Wakus using his claw. The mothership's activation also powers the battle suit, which identifies Wickus as an ally and the gang members as foes, subsequently annihilating them. A faction of mercenaries interrogates Christopher about the reawakened mothership while others pursue Wickus. Cornered, Wickus dons the suit and confronts them. Discovering Christopher's capture, he initially proposes a trade but revokes it upon hearing Vendor's execution order. In a wrathful outburst, he annihilates the mercenaries to rescue Christopher. They race to the shuttle, but Wakus remains, sacrificing his chance for freedom and refusing Christopher's invitation to his planet to ensure Christopher's escape. As thanks, the prawn promises to return in three years to cure him. Meanwhile, Wakus continues to kill mercenaries everywhere, spilling blood profusely, flipping a car in pursuit of him, and even launching a few missiles. When he's about to shoot Vender, a car suddenly hits him from behind, causing him to fall, with the suit malfunctioning. In this pivotal scene, Christopher actively contacts the mothership through the shuttle control panel. He makes the mothership extract the shuttle so he and CJ can escape. The mothership actively emits a tractor beam to pick up the shuttle. Seeing this, Venter immediately orders the firing of another missile. Wakus quickly intervenes, using his suit to grab the missile, which then explodes and destroys his left arm. Christopher and CJ's escape from the mothership infuriates Venter, so he actively shoots the suit until it's destroyed. Wakus manages to crawl out of it, revealing his swollen and yellow left eye, indicating his transformation is almost complete. Venter points his gun at Wakus, ready to kill him, but a group of prawns arrive in time and kill Venter, thus saving Wakus, whom they now see as one of them. Sometime later, humans celebrate the mothership's departure from Earth. Wakus's assistant exposed MU's illegal research, and the government actively relocated all 2.5 million prawns to the new District 10 before demolishing District 9. Wakus's story becomes infamous, but most people eventually stop thinking about him, assuming he's dead. However, Tania remains convinced that Wakus is fine because she finds a handcrafted metal flower at her door, a craft Wakus always enjoyed. Back in the landfill, it's revealed that Wakus, now fully transformed into a prawn, is alive and continues to make more metal flowers from the trash.